never changes. When he says he will bless you, he surely will bless you. Hallelujah. Just give a shout unto our God. Unchangeable. Reliable. Only you can do what no man can do. Unchangeable. can do what no man can everybody say unchangeable Metalist, come on, let's dance on to that. Aha! Yeah. You're so reliable, God. You're so changeable. We depend on you every day. Because only you can do what no man can. Everybody say unchangeable. today I felt the power of God constructive power of God during the morning glory hitting us including the preacher at the point of his knee glory to God hallelujah any man that is registered for a testimony the devil must fight are you getting me you buy a new car it's a problem to them your wives give birth of a bouncing baby boy or girl. It's a problem to them. You have a new job. They are angry. 
Your visa answers is a worry to them. Miracles happen. They are angry and miracles are happening. Are you getting me? All you can tell them is that it depends. Let me use an example. For example, now we're going to worship God. When you'll be worshiping God and the glory of God will be taking over you and tears will be coming out, they'll be like, see, crocodile tears, at least. At least. It's even crocodile tears. Who said their own tears day? Are you getting me? And you'll be having a wonderful time with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is having a koinonia with you. They'll be like, see, they recount you based on what they know about your past. But they never know that the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Listen, if there was no reason to come boldly, God would not say come boldly. He knows that some things that have happened in the past, but he has told you, keep it. Come with boldness. me. Worship is not dependent on your past. It's not dependent on your weaknesses. It's dependent on the boldness you have to come into the presence of God. I told you righteousness is presenting yourself before God blameless. Hallelujah. It's not based on the things you have done or did not do. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have died if your own righteousness were not as filthy as rats. Are you getting me? So what we're going to worship, don't think about what happened. That has weighed you down. Just empty your mind and tell God, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. That is why I'm here. The mercies are new every morning. That is why I came.
Hallelujah. So please open your mind. There are times where you open your mind and you have a reflection on your, on, on, on your acts, your deeds, and on your life. And you ask God, please help me if I cannot help myself. Praise God. Hallelujah. So now what is unforgiveness? Unforgiveness comes from the word forgive. To forgive. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it comes from the word to forgive. It means that somebody that does not forgive is unforgiving. And that is the noun unforgiveness. Praise God. Are you, are you, are you getting me? Now, that is a verb, sorry. To forgive, what is the meaning? If I have to tell you that forgive him. Or forgive her. Praise God. Are you getting me? What does it mean? Because I discovered that many people say things when they don't know the meanings. And when you don't know the meaning of something, you can't do it. Are you getting me? So what is the meaning to forgive? What does it mean? What does it actually mean if I say that I have forgiven him or I have forgiven her or this is what I've done? Praise God. Hallelujah. On, uh, to forgive comes from a Greek word called afiemi. Praise God. And this word means to let go. To let go. To send away. To omit. Omit means that you are deliberately living out. Are you getting me? Praise God. That's the meaning of forgive. It's to let go. To send away resentment. Bitterness. Hurt. Hatred. Glory to God. And if you are letting go, this is from the Greek. You know the New Testament was written in the Greek. Am I communicating? And if a feminine means to let go, it means it was held somewhere. I, am I communicating? It means it was held somewhere. It means there is something that was held somewhere. So to let go of what? To let go of pain. To let go of offense. To let go and send away resentment. To omit bitterness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody must have been offended. Everybody must have offended somebody. Glory to God. So why is Shepard interested in, in, in forgiving and uh, preaching or teaching today? LTM members or first-timers or newcomers should learn to forgive. It is because of what I'm going to teach you now. Praise God. It is the effects you can call it a negative effect because I can't even see any positive effect of unforgiveness. Praise God. Hallelujah. And praise God. Are you here? Are you here? Now, there is something you must understand. I cannot teach you out of the box. God permits you to be angry. Am I communicating? Some of you may be hearing it for the first time. God permits you to be angry. He permits you to be angry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.26. The Bible says, be ye angry. Be ye angry. Does that mean I should be angry? Wait, are you here? Be ye angry and sit not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath upon your anger. Praise God. Are, are you getting this? Be angry, but let not the sun go down upon your wrath. I was sitting in the campus one day, and I said I don't want to go into Rema, because Pastor Rema is here. I want to go into lexicalities, normal reading. Praise God. It means normally. 
It means you can get angry. You are permitted to be angry. But don't be angry until night. That is what the statement says superficially. Are you getting me? It means you are permitted to be angry. I cannot teach you and say, don't get angry. Don't get angry when shepherd himself gets angry at times. Are you getting me? At times we should, see, we should preach and teach reality. Be angry. Be angry. It means be offended. Because anger cannot just come from nowhere. There are some people, they are angry. They don't know what is causing them to be angry. That is the definition of the devil taking over your life. Because he's the only one that can cause anger without source. Because he himself is to kill, steal, and destroy. He does not have any good thing. Are you getting me? If you're angry, if you're offended, and you tell me you don't know the source, I have to call you. Three grace water, five power pans. Then we lock you up in a room for three days for fasting and prayer. It's not correct. Because... Yes, the Bible permits that be angry. But when you get angry and offended, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't, it means that you cannot get angry in the night because there's no sun. Are you getting me? It means in the night, if somebody makes you angry, either you postpone it to morning. In the morning, you can get angry. But if you get angry in the morning too, know that night does not have to meet you with anger. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? It means you are permitted to be angry. You are permitted to be offended. You are permitted to feel resentment. You are permitted to feel bitterness. But the next issue is don't keep it. Once you keep it, it tends to sin. Because the verse says, be angry and sin not. It means there is a way anger will stay in you and it becomes sin. When you incubate it for a longer time, you become sin. Because to you sin, you know sin is going against the Ten Commandments. Who told you? There are more than 630 commandments. Praise God. Hallelujah. It was summarized to become the Ten. Am I communicating? So, you are supposed to be angry. But sin not. Sin not means that don't keep it for long. Don't keep it, because when you keep it, it will graduate to the state of unforgiveness, and that is destruction on the way. That is destruction already knocking at your door. Glory to God. So, what is shepherd saying? What is shepherd saying? What is shepherd saying? What is shepherd saying? Shepherd is saying that um, you can get, get angry, but... I have to teach you now how to manage yourself so that you don't get to this state and finish yourself. I will be teaching you three levels or three stages of unforgiveness. The first one we're going to talk of is horizontal unforgiveness. Horizontal unforgiveness. Praise God. Horizontal means that this is you. Don't bother if you are not this thing. And there is somebody on the same line as you with an offense. Horizontal. Horizontal means a straight line. Not really straight line, a level line. Okay? Because you can have a straight line up. So, horizontal unforgiveness, according to Shepard, means that uh, this is a scenario where you have a problem with your brother, your mother, your father, your siblings, your friend, your family. You are of the same level. Praise God. Are, are, you, are you getting me? You have the same level with them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you will see that Unforgiveness comes as a result of grief. Somebody must cause you. Somebody must offend you. The first 
Unforgiveness in the Bible led to death. Of both the person that offended without knowing and the person that thinks or feels he was offended. Praise God. Are you getting me? Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter number 4. Verse number 4. The story is about Cain and Abel. Something happened. This guy was too jealous. Abel never did anything against him, but he felt a pain in his heart. So he harbored anger, and he became unforgiveness, and he had to murder his brother because of unforgiveness. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very rough. That's the beginning. And his countenance fell. The girls, they call it faces. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why are thou wrong? Why are you angry? And why is that countenance falling? Some people can be angry and their countenance is falling. And you ask them, Why is your face like that? They will tell you, That's how my face is. Your face is really like that. And if I'm there, I'll say, Let it remain like that in Jesus' name. And it will remain. If thou dost well, Shall thou not be accepted if you did well? Verse 7 says, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Kill him because of anger. Praise God. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Amen. And he said, What have you done? What have you done? Because of horizontal unforgiveness for your brother, for your sister. For your mother. Praise God. What have you done because of unforgiveness? I have a story. It's a life story in my village. One guy was angry with the sister and took a knife and pierced the sister and she died instantly. By that time, we were very young. Praise God. Instantly, she gave up the ghost. Praise God. Because of what? Anger, grief. Horizontal unforgiveness. There are many children, they are angry with their parents, especially their father. They say, when I was small, my father was never there. But you have grown up to this age, and you can speak. It means that your father was not really necessary for your growth. <laughs> Am I communicating? Uh, my mother was never there. And you have the mouth to speak without your mother. It should be a testimony. It should be a testimony. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it means if you can have the gods and the mouth to speak, it means you can move on from there. There is no need to be held bound by a past. Glory to God. Because of unforgiveness, Cain slew his brother Abel. It has happened many times. There are many stories. Many stories. Because of unforgiveness, he did this to me. This is what she did. If it's some families, they will stop the children from going to the father that your father did not take care of you when you were small. Don't pass. Don't go there. Are you getting me? I'm even talking, maybe some of you do that. Because the way you're answering. And at this stage, what they know is that they are fulfilling their ego. They are fulfilling their self-respect. They are fulfilling what they have inside of them as, as grudge, as rage, as anger. But it's as destructive as death. Am I communicating? It's as destructive as death. Praise God. 
What is the second form of unforgiveness? The second form of unforgiveness is vertical unforgiveness. Vertical unforgiveness. Praise God. My space is not enough. I'm going to draw it here. Vertical unforgiveness means that you are here. We are Kalex. Then, if you go up, there is a big man here that you are angry with. That has better legs than you have. Okay? Praise God. So, vertical unforgiveness means um, there is, for example, in a country, there is a, there is a governor that is angry with the president that appointed him. Are you getting me? Um, the, your association president is angry with Donald Trump. Are you getting me? Are you getting vertical unforgiveness? You have... You don't know why they're doing this like that. You're angry. Praise God. Vertical unforgiveness is, uh, there is a, a chorister, a sanctuary member, or a protocol that is angry with a shepherd. Praise God. Or the shepherd is angry with the apostle. He does not like what, what the apostle is doing. It is very destructive. Are you getting me? I would, he said, we are going to read a very long scripture, Numbers 12. You will see the effects of vertical unforgiveness. Let me tell you how dangerous this one is. I started from a lower one, although the lower one involved killing. Are you getting me? Vertical unforgiveness, this is how it is very dangerous. Even if you are right or wrong, you'll be destroyed. Yes, with vertical unforgiveness. Even if you're right or wrong, you'll be destroyed. Numbers 12. Can we read this long scripture? We're going to read right from Numbers 12, right? Even it ends at 16. But we may not reach there, we may reach there. Praise God. I want you to be calm and listen to this story. Are you getting me? Before I give you the story, Moses is the one God called. Aaron is the brother. And Miriam is a sister. Moses married an Ethiopian of which the law that he has and the laws of the land says that he should not marry a foreigner. Are you getting me? Now, Aaron and Moses are vertically angry. They are vertically angry with Mo uh, Aaron and Miriam, sorry. They are vertically angry with Moses. And see what God does. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Are you getting the story? And they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only to Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Do you know what they were saying? Miriam was a prophetess. Are you getting me? Aaron was a prophet. But Moses was a major prophet. Are you getting me? They were doing miracles. Miriam and Aaron, they can't prophesy to you and it comes to pass. They say everything and it happens. Somebody is sick, they lay hands, the person gets well. Are you getting me? And Moses does the things too. But they said, if Moses can do these things, I can do this thing too. Why am I not supposed to speak against? Now, continue. Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. It means that Moses was very down to earth. Praise God. Be careful of people that are very meek. Praise God. Verse 4. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. He said, come out. Why? Moses did not hear what Aaron and Miriam spoke, the Lord heard. Moses is not the one in charge, it's God that sent him. He did not even want it. He did not even want the call, the assignment. 
So God said, three of you should come. Are you following the story? And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they came and they both came forth. Praise God. There are some things you see in the God era, you prefer it to come. But there's another thing you see, you deny that God era, don't come again. And he said, Yet now my words. Is there a prophet among you? I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. I will speak unto him in a dream. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. He said, is there a prophet amongst you? I mean, between you and Miriam and Aaron, if there's a prophet amongst you, I will come down in a dream and give revelation in a dream. I will come down in a dream and talk to the person. I will come down in a dream and connect with the person. Are you getting me? But God says that with that level of the prophetic, you are still a babe. Are you getting me? In relation to Moses, I am the best. God said, I'm the one giving the prophetic. I am the one causing the miracles to happen in your hands. But even when you do it, it doesn't give you the God to speak against Moses. One bit. They were not speaking something bad. They were not saying something bad against Moses. It's good. They were speaking something good. It was good. They preferred Moses to remarry. To do marry and remarry. To suit them. As though they were the ones who were going to stay in the house with the wife. They forgot how this woman helped Moses in Exodus 4. Moses was to be killed by God. This woman intervened. My knowledge. Are you getting me? Let me tell you the story. Most of you don't know the story. Praise God. Relax, let me tell you something. In Exodus chapter number 4, God has just called Moses and assigned Moses for an assignment that is too big. When Moses even argued with God, that is Moses' weakness, argument and anger. But anger, they said, is because he was a stutterer before. Okay, Stamara. I know, I know you. Now, God just called Moses and commissioned him. Praise God. Moses was already married to Zipporah. You remember? And God commissioned him that go and help my people. He was going. He was on the course of going. God appeared in Moses' house and wanted to kill Moses. Are you getting me? God wanted to kill Moses. <sighs> Are you not the very person that sent Moses and you want to kill him? Then the wife of Moses and then Miss Zipporah got it by revelation that Moses was over how many years he has not been circumcised. Since the wife could not go and circumcise Moses, because Moses should be a big and strong man now, the wife had to circumcise the son and threw the first king of the, of, of the flesh, the first king of the, of, of, the, of the penis on Moses. The blood touched Moses, then got back out from killing Moses. Are you getting me? Yes, they never know that. They expect Moses to come and be telling them that, leave this wife. You don't know what she has done. No, Moses is not like that because he's very meek. Are you getting me? They rose up against Moses in Numbers 12. That why, can you, why should you? Why should you marry this Ethiopian? It's an Ethiopian. She's not part of us. She's not supposed to be. And Moses was quiet. God got angry. It means the creator of the heavens and the earth came down. If you know God well, he doesn't come down anyhow. Am I communicating? Go back, go back. Just uh, okay, yes. And he said, "Yet yeah, now he was speaking to Moses, uh, to, to Miriam and Aaron. Me, I speak to you, Miriam and Aaron, through dreams. I can speak to you through dreams and the rest. But he's, listen to what he will say. And he said, "Yet yeah, now my words. Is there a prophet among you? I'll, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. Go to seven. And listen to something. And my servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house. Listen to what he does to Moses. With him, I will speak mouth to mouth. Do you know what it means? You don't understand. You don't understand. 
Moses kissed God when they were speaking. Moses, God will come close and kiss God, but the only thing is that he will not see the face. Are you getting me? Wait, is this the, am I the one that wrote it? He said, you, you, Miriam, Aaron, I will speak to you in dreams with some stuff, some light, light stuff. God is the one telling you that that is not prophetic. Yeah. Glory to God. He said, but with Moses, I will speak to him mouth to mouth. This, you have never known when God gets angry. Ask Job. In Job 37 and 38. When God gets angry and he's asking you questions, you, will, you really see the flesh in the, in the man. <laughs> you don't understand me. He said he's also his flesh. Genesis 6. Praise God. He said with Moses, I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in, in large speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall behold, wherefore then were not he afraid to speak against my servant. Are you getting? This is God the Father talking. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And he departed. Do you know what? God never spoke anything against them. His anger was kindled. They left. But God, he brings a presence when his anger is kindled and he leaves. See what will happen. Vertical unforgiveness. Complete after me. Vertical. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous. God never said, Miriam, you have leprosy. Some of you don't read these things. God never told Miriam. Remember the message is the effects of unforgiveness. We have dealt with horizontal unforgiveness. We are dealing now with vertical. It's more dangerous than horizontal. Are you getting me? God never said, Miriam, okay, I will give you left. He left. His anger was kindled, then he left. He cannot stay because his anger endured before a moment. Psalms 30 verse 5. Are you getting me? His anger endured before a moment. He left. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was, uh, she was leprous. Aaron, nothing happened to Aaron. You know why, right? Nothing happened to Aaron because Aaron was putting on the effort. The effort is a priestly garment. It is purple in color. That in those days, priests put it on. It carries ability, the anointing. Because in those days, the Holy Spirit was not there to bring the anointing. So the effort is a representation of the anointing that the priest carried. So he had power that even God cannot penetrate. Are you getting the teaching? So nothing happened to Aaron. Aaron was fine. The Aaron was part and parcel of the vertical unforgiveness. And Aaron said unto Moses, alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, I lay not the sin upon us. Sorry, I beseech thee, please. He called his brother, his Lord. Are you getting it? Yes. Lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. Continue. Let her not be as one dead and womb the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord. Moses is too loving. The brother spoke to him that please beg your God. This is a minor prophet telling a major prophet. Can you not speak to God too? Are you getting this? Yeah. You should understand hierarchy. Hierarchy is not there for merrymaking. Praise God. It's even in the Jagi house, hierarchy is respected. He then entreated Moses, Aaron entreated Moses, that please beg your God, we have to help our sister. Me, I will not put blame on you again. <clears throat> Men love to see signs and wonders before they believe you. Are you, are you getting me? Yes, sir. Aaron saw he was scared. He said, no. 
God did not say anything against her. God just left. Leprosy came. Then if God spoke. And Moses immediately cried out unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beg you. Hear what God will tell him. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed for even seven days? This means that immediately it happened, Moses asked. Are you getting me? Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father, and God is saying this because Moses spoke, and he said, Moses, if um, Miriam, he, he, he rape no, I, I want to bring it down. If Miriam be rape sample you small. You know, every liver made it in stay in seven days, completion. You understand? Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Just shout, just shout, just shout. I, I don't know. I don't. See, it's like God knew that I must preach this gospel because I don't know what I would have done. I don't know what I would have done without this gospel. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because it is sweet. Right, Are you getting me? Yes. It is real. Praise God. Especially when they translate Bible to Mboko language. That's what I'll buy. You want to see somebody say, yeah, pay. Calling God, oh. And some people will say, why are you calling God like that? Father, father. Who brought father? Is it not English language? <laughs> say, yeah, pay. Say, bad language. Who brought the language? It's not human beings. Call father in your dialect. Okay, it's difficult. Huh? Mpai. It means, it means palava in Kenya. Jesus. Jesus is Lord. It's in Mpai. They better change it. Are you getting? Mpai, it means palava in my dialect. So, if somebody says, Yepe, why are you angry? Because to you, it's Mboko language. He's praising God in his own way. Are you understanding me? You should understand the word of God. Praise God. Some people are angry. That's why you're calling Jesus Bros. J. Is it not better than people who want to say in Jesus when they say IJN? Jesus. To spell your Jesus, you abbreviate his name. And these people of abbreviation, there's a problem with it. They can abbreviate a, a word that is just two letters. They can abbreviate it long. Or, if they are not abbreviating longer, or K is O and K. Somebody will write K, K. You are abbreviating the word that could just be complete with the very letters you have written. There is a very serious problem, especially online, when you go to social media and the rest. Abbreviation of words. Somebody writes something very nice, a very good write-up, and wants to write in Jesus' name. The person writes I-J-N. So it is Jesus that you are summarizing. He will summarize you. Summarizer. Praise God. A very word that you could just write it out. Okay. You write K K. Lord said to Moses, if her father be speed in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Just seven days. Because Moses spoke. If Moses did not speak, it would be eternity. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. From the camp. From the camp. From the camp. Seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. Are you getting? And Miriam was shot out of the camp, from the camp, seven days. And the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. You know they are on transit. They sent Miriam out, seven days. Leprous for seven days. Because Moses even spoke and entreated God. He beseeched his Lord. Then God gave Moses, uh, sorry, Miriam, seven days. Are you getting the story? And after the war, the people removed the Hezrite and peace in the wilderness of Paran. That's okay. That's been the last verse. Are you getting the story? Miriam went through leprosy for seven days because she spoke a good thing against a wrong man. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is not Moses' making. Moses did not ask God to come. God just came when he heard. Praise God. 
Watch the things you say against your pastor. It's good though. You are just saying something good. But the intention of what you said, that's what Jesus, or that's what God checks. Good, but with what intention? With what intention? Because they said to themselves, they can also prophesy. Aaron and Miriam said, we can also prophesy. We can do these things. We can also heal the sick. What does it mean? What does it really mean? Are you getting my point? But you should be careful because if they, if God gets involved, it means that even your own will get dissolved. So when you say when God gets involved, this gets dissolved, you don't understand. It means that even your own negativities will get dissolved. It will dissolve you. Praise God. Now, this is the second form of uh, unforgiveness, vertical. Don't be angry with somebody you cannot do, beat. Are you, get, are you getting me? Somebody cannot shout at. Don't get angry with the person. Instead, something wants to happen. Just evade it. In, in the dreamest part of my dream, I have never thought that one day I'll be angry with that. Praise God. That will get up, you will say something, I'm being like this. Mm. As you say it like that, to bring down the mouth is not easy. Yeah. Then you cannot speak. Yeah. Say, all right, what is happening? Help out what is happening. You understand? Yes. Don't try it. It's destructive. Because when God came, God did not even explain that. Do you know that I'm, I'm the one that permitted him to marry Zipporah? No, God, he doesn't need to explain. He comes with action. Amen. Then the third form of unforgiveness. In fact, this one is the most destructive one. Hmm? Personal or internal unforgiveness. That's for, from yourself to yourself. So I don't even need to draw it. Oh, let me try. Internal or personal unforgiveness. Somebody that is in, in hate. I don't know how to put it. Does not want to forgive himself or herself. That's a third. Personal or internal unforgiveness. If I want to draw it, I will say this is the person. And this is the very person again. He don't scatter all things. Himself into himself, everything, everything, everything gone. Cabreto, gone. Radiator, destroyed. Everything destroyed. I'm happy you understand. I just want to use any way to make you understand it. Praise God. Personal unforgiveness, internal unforgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. And praise God. Let's go to Matthew chapter number 27, verse number 4. This is the man that did all the wrong he did against his master. So it's almost double, yeah. It's almost vertical, strong, internal. He went against Jesus, punked Jesus with 30 pieces of silver, and did not use the money. Are you getting me? I'm sorry that I'm preaching or teaching and using this word. I just want you to understand it. You know, some of you don't like punk. But the other boys that came from the punking area, they, they feel it. I know it means we are recognized here. Yes, you are recognized. They change. <laughs> Saying this saying, I have seen in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. This was Judas Iscariot. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the piece of silver in the temple. He went, you know, pastors are the one that uh, paid Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus. Yes, that's how he went to church to give him the money. And he cast down the piece of silver in the temple and departed and went what? He went and hung himself. He committed suicide. Are you seeing how personal unforgiveness is dangerous? He himself committed suicide. He killed himself because he did not want to forgive himself. He would have just gone 
Do you know what? Bible is not Bible because you have written it and it's like that. You have to think out of the box and think. If Judas just mounted courage to follow to where they were, uh, they had to, uh, you know, crucify Jesus, he would have heard him say, Father, count it not against them. Are you getting me? He did not follow. He did not repent immediately. Although the Bible says that he repented in the, in the former verse. But repenting is not in saying, it's in action as well as it's in words. So he had to commit suicide because he did not forgive himself. Because if it's about Jesus, Jesus does not even need forgiveness. He forgave Judas before he came. In fact, that's why he came. That's the reason he came. To forgive Judas. Are you getting my point? So what is the meaning of internal or personal of forgiveness? You know yourself, you know the things you have done. But you have come to church, or the shepherd has preached, forgive yourself, you don't want to forgive yourself. Every day you keep on repeating and holding yourself under subjection because of what you did two years ago. Because of what you did one year ago. Because of what you did yesterday. You hold yourself. You condemn yourself. You speak against your own self. You have to be careful because if you cannot forgive yourself, you cannot forgive anybody. You cannot forgive anybody because have you dealt with your own self? Forgive yourself first. Tell yourself, I'm starting a new page. I'm starting all over again. Jesus loves me. That's the reason he died for me. No matter what has happened, I can do it. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, I can forge ahead. I can walk it out again. Praise God. But many people, upon themselves, they, they, they do what we call self-condemnation. They say, I cannot do it. And as a man speaketh, a thinker in his heart, sorry, so is he. Once you start nursing it that you cannot do it, you cannot really do it. Because it has to start from within you. It has to it's a conviction that I can do it. I can do it again. Peter got to that level. Peter got to that level. Listen to the prophetic now. Peter will not listen to the prophetic from Jesus. Because of SS, Shosho, Amen. You know, Shosho is not bad. It has the positive and the negative side. Okay? Jesus said, Peter, you deny me three times. He said, no, bros, J, leave that thing. Me, Piero, no way. I will be with you. Jesus said, oh, me, the prophetic vovovo, if I tell you something, listen to me. That's why no word from the apostle to me has ever dropped. I take it to heart. Because even when he's joking, the prophetic is real. Even play, play. Are you getting my point? When it happened... Peter saw himself fulfilling prophecy. The first one was a little girl. A small girl. In fact, if Peter, if there were people around there, if Peter fulfilled lost one crack. <laughs> you know, you have to paint the picture in a way that makes, you interest, it makes it interesting. Look at Peter. Peter is around. They are asking Jesus questions. Jesus saw him. He saw Jesus. He made like this. In fact, he was even the only one that could go there. The rest, Andrew, Bato, Bato left Gethsemane and got to Galilee the very day. Bato, he, he knew how to run. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Andrew, as he was running like that, piap, piap, he entered water. Piap. Andrew, come on, the Navy, none of you didn't follow that Jesus did fine. Before the friends go catch him, he don't tire well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then John did not go far. John was going and looking, but if they just say, Goose! ah, if for if Tokyo, if for pick Tokyo. So Peter and I was following, 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 and came around. He was just there. Peter's head was this high. He hit the head. You understand? He hit the head so that he will flat. They will not know that. It's, it looks like Jesus. Yeah. 
Is this gospel not sweet to you? Hallelujah. Praise God. Call any other disciple that you love. Thomas remove the power ban. Thomas remove power ban, I'm telling you. Amen. Thomas, he was putting on power ban, he removed it. Because they see him, they say, hey, I know Tom. He knows how to run. He knows how to run because the first time Jesus came among the disciples, he was not there. If you don't go far. So he started taking transport, he comes small, small. These guys were wise. Amen. Amen. I said, Thomas removed the power ban. His hands were empty. Praise God. Then, when Peter was in the presence, one little girl, which did the girl define at me? A damsel, small girl. That's the way the girl was looking at Peter. Peter was suspecting. This girl, if he just there in his heart, if you make anything, if he crack you, if I crack you, you could not say that I catch fish for Jesus. Are you getting me? So, if you saw, uh, you know, somebody were doing Bible stories, and somebody said, if you watch the film, he was explaining the Bible story, then told us that if we watch the film, we'll understand better. <laughs> we're celebrating. <laughs> You know the film? It means that the film is the original film when Jesus was there. <laughs> Praise God. I wonder where there was camera there. Amen. You know, there are some of these Bible stories you watch. If you have not read the story, it will confuse you. But as I'm explaining, you understand it, right? When Peter saw that girl, that girl was there. That's where Jesus was. Peter was shifting towards the child. Like, no, there were two options. If the child wants to talk, you call her to pick him up. If they begin, this on way, if he crack him, he crack him. But before Peter got to the child, he said, is this not, was this not Jesus? He said, which Jesus? He shifted to the other side. Are you, are you getting me? The other person wanted to say, he shifted. The third time was many people. He got the, the foul. He turned. He was shifted to a place where he can easily run. When, he, when people are around, you don't run because they will follow you. Even if you are not a suspect. You understand? So you shift... If it was in the evening or the night, where there is light, the lamps and everything, shift, you go to a place that is clear, you pick them. So this is the wisdom I'm teaching you from this story. Are you getting me? Judas did not understand that he would have just waited. Jesus is a father. Praise God. He's a father. You would have come. Just to know that, yes, you did it to Jesus, but he's asked God to count it on against you. And you'll be saved instead of you going to kill yourself because of internal, personal unforgiveness. You would have started from there. Am I communicating? The fourth one is the mixture of personal, internal, vertical, and horizontal unforgiveness. That one is equal to death and is not only hell, it's the lake of fire. One man, the person has personal, internal unforgiveness. Vertical unforgiveness and horizontal unforgiveness. Let me explain. You have not understood. Within the person, the person has not forgiven his or herself. Has problems with the person. The person is angry with the pastor. Number three, the person has problems in the family. Everybody is angry with him in the family. The friends. Then at the workplace, everybody is angry with him. Or the other way, everybody has offended him or her in the office. You leave the office, go to Njange House, it's the same. You go to the village meeting, the same. And the people start asking, why am I wanting this so? That's, when you hear that, just bring the person to church. We call all the shepherd and the young shepherd, they come together with grace water. We start with antenna. We beg the person to say, remove antenna first. Are you getting me? Remove antenna first. Then... The other one will go and look for the pastor that you wronged or wronged you. We will beg them, we ask you to apologize to the pastor. Then we will now look for your family members. And what if some have traveled? Or some of the, all these we are looking for are dead. I, I'm, I'm bringing the message so low so that you can understand what I'm saying. Praise God. So if you have one, 
It's even better we can even know how to handle it. If I'm the cause, just tell me we'll arrange it. But if you are the cause, arrange it yourself, please. If your sisters, your siblings, this one, family members are involved, please forgive them so that you can be free. Amen. Next point. What is going to happen now? How does unforgiveness play with your system, your body? The destructiveness, the effects of unforgiveness to your human body. The first point where unforgiveness holds is your heart. I'm not taking, talking of spiritual heart. Your physical heart that pumps blood to your system. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? There is a triple F hormone that is released in your body when you are in a situation that is fight, it's a fright. The FFF hormone is adrenaline. Are you getting me? Now, it has been proven that once you have an issue or a problem with somebody and you, have, you, you bear grudge with that person, the person's picture, the sight of the person and the person's voice causes this hormone to be released and it has an effect on your heart. Are you getting me? If you're angry with the apostle, how can you listen to his message? If you're angry with the shepherd and you're sitting now, everything he's saying is nonsense. Unforgiveness, nonsense. Forgiveness, forgiveness that is even better, oh, nonsense. Take away anger from your heart, nonsense. Are you getting me? So, the sight or hearing the person talk causes you to feel pain and it affects your heart. But you cannot know the effect because it's a gradual process. It's a gradual process. That is why if you always have unforgiveness and you stay in the same place with the people, you can develop hypertension. It is not from a result of bloodline hypertension or this or that. It's because you, that's why some houses that are troubled, there must be sicknesses. The sicknesses do not turn up because it's in a family, but it's because of where you find yourself. Are you getting me? Does it mean anything to you? And now when they tell you, free up your heart, keep the heart with all diligence. It is not only heart of the spirit, it's heart of your real biological heart that pumps blood to your system. Guard it. Guard it by letting go. Guard it by sending away the pain. Because it's going to cause you pain. It's going to cause you pain. The same way, in those days, when some people see some people they love, their heart is beating. Boom, boom, boom. Am I communicating? Are you understanding? How do you understand that one? That is the same effect hate brings to the heart, anger, anguish. Pain brings to the heart. And if you don't give it up, there will be a time you are feeling free with the person, but it has entered your subconscious mind. When it gets to the subconscious, that's the most dangerous because it can stay there for 52 years without you knowing. That's why they call it subconscious. You are not too aware of it. Then you are in pain for a long time. The question is, this is what he did to me. Can you imagine that he impregnated me and left me with a child? But the child did not die. The child is still alive. Even if the child dies, it's a testimony for you. But how could you take care of the child? Some of, oh, God. Some of you don't know how to live with God. Everything that happens to us, there's no disadvantage. Praise God. The boy goes, you cry, that is pain. The boy comes by, you cry. You say, it's causing you a problem. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? You are in the, uh, let me explain something to you. Look at the bachelor, a spin star. Oh God, I need a husband. Oh, the bachelor, I need a wife. The wife comes, it's a problem. The first bachelor, Adam. If comes, you say it's a problem. If God takes if, you say, what's the problem? I need if. 
God brings Eve, he says a problem. Something happens, you tell God, it's a woman that you gave me. Are you getting? That's the point. Because some of us pray for testimonies of which the testimonies will bring anger. But God knows that you'll be angry and gives you the testimony because he knows that you will not let the sun go down upon your wrath. Am I communicating? Praise God. Let me bring this to you and show you that you can only be angry against something that has life. It shows you that there is something wrong. There is something there. Praise God. Dr. Bisson got up in the morning. He's, he takes his car. He's driving the car. Driving the car. Driving the car. The car gets somewhere. He has a problem. Oh, they come and check the car. You see, you have to change the carburetor and change this one and change this one. Does he get angry with the car and tell the car, I will not talk to you, car. That's the last time. I took you from the house, fine. You have left me here. I will see how you will succeed. Okay, you're laughing. But if Dr. Bison was on a human being and the human being gets there and the human being says, I'm tired, he can be, there's a possibility that he can be angry with the person, especially if he's going for something that he's time bound. Are you getting me? But you cannot pour the anger on an inanimate stuff. It means that there's a trick with anger. It wants to cause destruction to you. Why can't you be angry with an inanimate object? Why can't you be angry with your car? And tell the car, I will not enter you again. And you leave the car there and go. Take the keys. When you think of the 3.5 million, say, no way, give up my keys. Okay, you got the point. See, I'm bringing this picture to you to show you that unforgiveness is not real. It's not real. It's a trick by the devil to hold you down. Otherwise, you would have done it against objects. You are the one that bought your gas bottle with gas inside and connected it and you were cooking. Gas gets finished. You take gas bottle. You say, I will touch you. How I would you cook in the course of cooking? Rice? No, 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 rice. Fufu and eru. You just finish. From today, I need to talk again for you. In fact, I don't leave you for day. When you go home, the cash, you come back. Say, come here. I'm going to buy you gas. Can't finish my fufu and eru chop. Are you getting me? Yes, Does it make sense to you? Yes, you cannot get angry and tell everybody. I've told you people, I'm angry with my phone. I will never forgive that phone. They will carry you to where I called last time. That's psychiatric home. Are you getting me? You wanted to make a call and it's not going. The phone is, you tell the phone, phone, iPhone 8. From today, this thing, I'll have a contract. And I'm supposed to call for confirmation. In fact, they called me, then you, you got frozen. From today, I'm not going to use you again. Me and you, we need to talk. You start going. iPhone 8, iPhone 8, 600 plus. 600 plus 1,000. You remember. You say, come, let me go and give it to a repairer. If you do that again. Are you getting my point? Objects fail you, and you don't get angry with them. We were in the heart of worship today. And the gen chipped off. The shepherd left the altar. You gen. If the devil wants to worry you, tell the devil that I pray and the sick get healed. Gen, bring me a gen. Gen, you people should wait. I'm going to beat the gen. Are you not the people that will come and hold me? Young shepherd, when I come home, is this not our shepherd? I said, No. This gentle thing, enough is enough. Amen. Hallelujah. But do you know that what a gent did? A human being would do it and you'll be angry with a human being. At times, something happens in your life, you want to connect it to a human being because you just want to be angry. Who throw the water for you? Who not come? Listen, the issue that happened, there's water on the ground. That is the cause of anger. But that is not enough. You must link it. Who's that? Okay, for tap. Now, who opened this tap? Eh? Get angry with tap now. Who opened the tap? Do you know what? Anger is looking for who that is having life to attack. You get to the tap, 
Then listen, they tell you, um, Papa, this tap be actually be open. Tap not be the flow, but the tap be be open because, and the key say when tap come, it will just come out. Who opened the tap and left the tap open? Come here, I'm the father of this house. Father, do you know what it means? It means you have gone away from your house. The father you are from your house. Because if you were in your house, you would look for solution. And by that time you are talking, the water is still flowing. And this water is still flowing and going down to the carpet. Ogasa, dry cleaner no me no enter carpet. No! How can I be dry cleaning in my own house? Your own house, you don't go dry cleaning. I'm church, you go dry cleaning. Are you getting my synesis? It means the only thing unforgiveness is doing is looking for a person to catch. That's what anger does. If you tell the night this machine, who brought this machine here? This machine has been there six days ago. Six days ago, who brought it? Because if you don't see a human being that has life in him, the anger will not be complete. If they tell you that nobody, so, so God brings machine to places, what do you mean? You, you look for the person. If people don't look for the person, people are in trouble. Eh? Are you getting it? If you people don't look for the person, immediately people will carry the anger I have for the person. Celebrate God. Amen. Now, there is a solution to unforgiveness. There is. It's to let go. And be free. Because it's a chain that has tied you and you are connected to the person. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because unforgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the person that hurt you to die. Are you getting me? Unforgiveness is like you, the unforgiving person. You drink poison and wait for the person that you are angry with to die. Who will die? Not me, I mean you. I, not you. <laughs> Praise God. So people said to me, not you, not you. You don't want to forgive. You don't want to forgive, not you. You drink poison. Because the pain is in you. The pain is all over you. And you are waiting for the other person to die. The person, they fine. Some people, they are angry. Some people, the people don't even know. And the people come, hey, Palo, Palo don't come. So will be Palo. Me not pass on my corner. Palo say, wait till I do. Maybe the previous day, Palo was passing. Palo did not do it intentionally. Somebody had told him, the person that is angry, that Palo, they saw Palo, they were talking about you. Okay, see. See, now Palo will come. See, he will do something, he will, he will hurt you. Then it happened coincidentally. Palo did not mean it. When Palo was passing, Palo went and kicked an empty can. The can went directly to the person. Say no, uh, no, you don't say no. Then the person is watching Palo. Then Palo looked this way. He greeted three people. Then on reaching the person, somebody called him. I tell you no, he not salute you. That is the beginning of problem. Then when Palo is talking now, Palo did not mean it. They want to talk about you. They say no, leave that man. That man just should worry. Say, Jesus, one, two, now the third time is Palo don't confirm him. Palo will see me. You are angry. Then the next day you see Palo. Palo brings you maybe a bottle of drink. You say, which drink? I don't want that in there. Palo say, wait, see. What's the problem? You are angry. Palo does not even know. Palo does not even know. You get angry and angry. And with girls, I'm not going to talk for you. It's even a testimony, not for you, the number of people with the disturb you go reduce. Amen. Hallelujah. You know the thing that you remove money and give to people, they say, I will not take it because you are a courtist. You do know it? If somebody does that to me, I will thank God. Say, thank you, Jesus. You have reduced my expenditure. I know that this person will never ask money from me. Praise God. You know me, the person I want to ask to say, where well, the money will remain, and I want for where they for court. Now I get them. That will come up for court. You will see me there. 
there are 40 things I can do. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was working somewhere. I love children. So the children were happy. Pastor, Pastor. I called them. I gave them money. They went. Their mother asked them to come and give me back the money. I knew. I took back the money. I said, well, thank you very much. Thank you, eh? Then another day, I drove. I was coming back. They were following my car. Hitting my car with sticks. Then I stopped. Their mother was yelling. I said, well, people don't like my money, but do you like the car? I can still give you the car. <laughs> I said, do you people like the car? They said, yes. I said, people should come and enter the car. Their mother was looking at them. When they wanted to enter, I said, go, 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 go and meet your brother. <laughs> Praise God. You know, there are some things you know Shepard cannot do, right? But I love, I enjoy myself. I enjoy myself. Because the mother was hearing. How can you refuse my money? You want to enter my car? If I have which, where should the car be? Where should the witch be? Inside the car more. Praise God. Just celebrate God, celebrate God. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. Wait there. Just wait there. Go back there. Please. Everybody has offended somebody. You have offended God. You have offended many things. And many people. But it is of the Lord's mercy that we are even living today. After all what we have done wrong. It is of the mercy of the Lord. It's of the mercy of the Lord that we are alive today. So don't hold it too much. Because it is God that granted you mercy. 23. It says, the mercies are what? They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It means that even if somebody angered you yesterday and you said you could not forgive, in the morning the mercies are new. Forgive. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, this is one of the solutions. If thou bring thy gift to the altar, you, you have brought your gift today, and then you remember that your brother has wronged you, listen to it very well. Praise God. If you bring your gift to the altar, right? Okay, um, come. Dr. Bison, come. You go and look for a gift. Look for a gift to the altar. Wow, that's your gift to the altar. Then you will stand here, sir. No, you will stand here. This is Pastor Simon's brother, Dr. Bison. Then, Pastor Simon is going to the altar to put a gift on the altar. Before Pastor Simon went, something happened. Stand here. Dr. Bison, slap him with a holy slap. Thank you, thank you. With a holy slap. He said, now there is already an offense. Then, Pastor Simon is going to the altar with his gift. Go, be going to the altar. Be going to the altar with your gift. Be going to the altar with your gift. Oh, stop! He remembered that. Remember, who, who, who wronged him? Dr. Bison, right? It is not him. Pastor Simon is not the one that slapped Dr. Bison. It's Dr. Bison that slapped Pastor Simon. Matthew 5.23 is saying that if he gets here and remember that Dr. Bison wronged him, Pastor Simon, he should keep his gift. Keep your gift on the altar. Go back and make peace with Dr. Bison. Dr. Bison is the one that slapped him. He's going back to make peace with him. You see? Are you seeing the peace? Then he goes back. He goes back with another gift, another one. You cannot just... He's going back to the altar to put the other gift. Because now his mind is free. It is not him that wronged Dr. Bison. Dr. Bison wronged him. He goes back and makes peace with Dr. Bison. Are you getting me? Now go back. What if he's the one that slapped Dr. Bison? Stand there. What if he's the one that slapped Dr. Bison? Slap him. Jesus! <laughs> Celebrate God. The message has stopped there. Carry your voice. 
Hey! Jesus! Let's go to 24. Matthew 23. Let's, after 23, we'll read again 24. Then we close. He said, therefore, if, any, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there you remember that your brother wrong against you, hmm? 24. Leave there thy gift before the altar. That's why I ask him not to go back with the phone. Huh? And go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. And then you come and offer your gift. It's your brother that wrongs you. You do not wrong the brother. Then what if you are the one that wronged the brother? Don't even come. That's the meaning. Don't even come. Arrange yourself. Prepare yourself from your heart. Release your mind. So that God will accept your gift. Hey, brother, have I prophesied to you before? Because I'm seeing a testimony on the way. I was asking God, as as things. Then I was asking God, how is the nature of this testimony? How is the nature of this testimony? How is the nature of the testimony? Where's your passport? You don't have passport. Yes. That's the first proof of the testimony. Um, there is, listen. I, I'm seeing somebody abroad. In this coming June, the person will ask you to do a passport. In this coming June. You ask you to do a passport, and why am I saying this? Why am I saying this? There was a time it was supposed to help you, but things became a bit difficult. And this another time he wants to bring another stuff again, so that this one will be more serious than the previous one. I need to deliver you, sir. Come, come. Have I prayed for you before? Yeah. Have I prayed for you before? Yes, sir. On the prayer line? No, uh, at the, 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 the branch. Okay. Okay. This, this man attended Mutegene branch day one. Uh, crusade day one. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And they said he had never accepted to come to church. Is that true? It's your husband, right? No, sir. From that in coming? Yes, sir. But not frequent. Not frequent, not yes. frequent. That is true. Not frequent because I said he will have a dream. Yes, sir. Yes, I said he will have a dream, but he's not actually have it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. I saw him. Immediately I saw him. I saw the face of a masquerade. A masquerade came. Pew, pew, yes, sir. In the twinkle of an eye. In the twinkle of an eye, as I was here, as I looked at him, his face changed like one second. I saw the face of the masculine. That's why I asked him, have I ever prayed for you? <laughs> Sir, you always tell me that when he was young, you always see stone coming to the face. And then you will start crying. Even when he's in the house, the stone will be coming. A stone. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And praise God. I'm getting a name, Hannah. Hannah. Eh? Yana. Eh? Yes, sir. My name is Anna, but they call me Anna in the book is Anna, but my real name is Hannah. Hannah? Yes, sir. Sir. This is what I wrote. I said, Oh God, let the shepherd come for my father. Horizontal problem with my father. Come, let me pray for you. Come. Your man in red.
a lot of idol worship in your family. Idol worship. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this, this, you ought, when you were growing up, when you were growing up, I saw a very good, a very good marriage open door that you had. That it cancelled because of this idol worship. Eh? If, if that proposal would have worked, if that, if that proposal would have worked out, I'm not seeing you in this country. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Liberate my family. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm getting another name that starts with S. Eh? I'm getting another name that starts with S. Celestine, my brother. It's your brother? Huh? Yes, sir. But you have a stepbrother. Eh? Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing your father is not one wife. Yes, sir. True, sir. I, I know, I know. When the other woman came, it was a different problem all along in the house. And in a way, they, he abandoned you people totally. Eh? And he's taking care of the other side. So is it from the child they abandoned my mother? Your mother? Yes, sir. Amen. Listen, there are many problems you're going through. It is for you to forgive. Even if the person wronged you or you wronged the person, start from yourself. Are you getting me? Start from yourself so that your mind will be Relieved. When your mind is released, then you can go further. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'm, 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 I don't know how to get it, but I'm getting around here. There is somebody that does not only love the word of God, teaches, preaches the word of God. I don't know whether he wanted to see me or did not want to see me. He has a connection with, with Omega Fire, OFM. Who knows that the apostle loves uh, uh, the, the man of OFM? You say you're the one? God bless you. Yes, sir. What's your name, sir? I'm Henry. Yeah? Henry. Henry. From Omega Bible Institute. Omega Fire. Yeah. What I just said about you wanting to see me, is it true? Yes, the Lord ministered to me that you will speak to me today. The church is complete. The church is complete. And you know how the Holy Ghost is? If the Holy Ghost tells you something, it comes to the person in charge and ministers to him that this is what I want you to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to bless this guy in the month of June with a sum of 100,000. Thank you, Jesus. For, for the purpose of his idea. You have finished your course? I'm, ra I'm running off this August. Yes, this is a guy doing a degree in what? In CSC Biology, sir. And he, he, he does uh, agriculture, farming. And the products are wonderful. Are you getting me? He gave me a proposal and I said, 
I was praying. I've been praying over it. And I said, we're going to bless him 100,000 to improve his work. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come, come and tell me. He wanted me to speak to you. Eh? Eh? Because his appointment has been too long. Thank you, Jesus. And if I did not speak to you today, you will not, you will know that God does not love you. That I've been talking to my heart that you should talk to me today. Eh? That I've been talking to my heart that you should talk to me today. That I should talk to you today. Yes, sir. Is your job today? Is the job today? You lost it. Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing it's an all round loss. He lost the job. And this guy. And I'm seeing somebody accusing you from the family that you are a failure, that they should not be spent again on you. They should not do anything again on you. Eh? Yes, sir. Because if I want to check, you, they, if I want to check, they have really, the input they have put on you is too much. Yes, sir. I open your life no. in marriage. No. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is Zala Bron Shakati Lodonria Pratis Suzala Hada San de Cote Ribaka Randon do Tita Rada Shanda Brahada Dus Nare Kele Nare Kele for the great and mighty. In Jesus' name, Lord, these hands you are anointed. These hands you are anointed. I want to do a different thing today. When I touch you, if you don't receive the testimony, call me shepherd. Are you getting me? If I touch you, you don't receive the testimony, you call me shepherd. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Receive your child now. Just greet me, you're a man of God. Greet me. You don't need to touch me. I don't need to touch you. Father, thank you. Help his ministry. Lord, turn her tears into tears of joy. Turn her tears into tears of joy. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. You want to receive a testimony? Come and touch me. Just come and touch my hand. Touch my hand. Thank <laughs> you.
That's how Anna cried. Then Eli said, this very time next year. This very time next year. This very time next year. Let her cry, turn into joy. Daddy, come, let me touch you. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Where are you coming from? Abroad. From? From whom? From whom? Okay, it's your brother. Okay, this is your father. Wow, he's still very, very handsome. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And praise God. The fact that you are alive is by God's grace. Are you getting me? Because um, they poison you two times. They poison you two times. How many times? Two. Two. It's two times, sir. It's two. two. But you strong, you strong past poison. It's strong past poison. Hallelujah. And why is this poison? There is one I'm seeing from outside. There's another one I'm seeing from inside. Why? Because his father was very summer what to do and left him a lot of property. It's true, sir. It's very true. Thank you, Jesus. And there was another time they wanted to give him a position, even he refused. Yes, sir. It's eh? true. Yes, they want to give position. Aspa, on Aspa, it was a true. Talk. They want to give position. He refused because it was a trap. Praise God. It's I mean, true. no one will prophesy to you, but if it's I touch true. you, I'll prophesy to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm still seeing one of the poison, even the last one, still working. He's still working in his body. It's still affecting him. Although he overcame, but not by the blood of the Lamb, because he has not testified. Okay, I wanted to say that the son is confirming that they wanted to put him as the head, the family, the big family head. So he refused. And so they went behind Am him. Am I a member of your family, sir? Am I a member of your family? affect him. Um, there are some people that are good, but they are not in Christ. Praise God. He is pew. Pew means he's, he has not put his hand somewhere. That is why this thing did not affect him. Are you getting me? Yes, he has not put his hand somewhere, and that is why this thing did not affect him. If at all, his hands were soiled. It would have affected him big time. Praise God. The first one was is from outside. I cannot get the name clearly, but I'm getting a name Ati. Ati something. Atiba. So it was coming from outside. They did not succeed. So they passed through another one inside. And the name of the person begins with J. 
Celebrate God for him. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands above your head. Raise your hands above your head. Say, whatever God has kept in store for me as a testimony, as a testimony, I receive it now. I receive it now. Receive it, receive it. Receive your testimony now. Now, 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 now. Whatever God has kept in for me as a testimony, in this year, in this month, in this time, I receive it now. 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 In Jesus' name. Then the instrumentalists are going to follow me. Be bold, 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 be bold. Transformer with high tech. I'm bold, I'm bold, I'm bold, I'm bold, I'm bold, I'm bold. Sing it for me! And surely, and the grace, is and abide with us. As a life transformer, transforming my soul, and everything that comes in contact with me, demonstrating the fruit and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, 
Again. Glory! Glory! 